Hi, my name is Ann Brazo. I'm the CEO of MPN Advocacy and Education International. We just hosted our very first pediatric and young adult MPN program in Chicago, Illinois. And although we had some parents and young adults speak at this event, we thought it would be very advantageous to those of you out there who just recently had a child diagnosed with an MPN, or you are a young adult who was just diagnosed with an MPN. And so we are going to interview some of those parents that were here today. Thank you very much for coming to our first annual Pediatric M and Young Adult MPM program. And thank you for allowing me to interview you uh, for a few moments. So Manoj, your daughter has an MPN. Yeah. Um, how old is she and when was she diagnosed? Uh, she's 16 years old, a junior in high school. Uh, she was diagnosed, um, I wanna say about two years ago, I believe, a year and a half, two years ago. Um, she was about 15, around that age, I believe. Um, and, and diagnosed with? Uh, she was diagnosed with essential thrombocythemia. Okay, okay. And what did you do after that? What, what was the first thing you did after that? Um, I am an engineer by trade, uh, graduate school from that, and so my, my tendency is to go research. And so I cope by learning as much as I can. Sure. Uh, so I, um, Try to figure out, learn as much as I could about what ET was about, and then discovered the name MPN from that. Um, I used Google Scholar to find folks who had written papers mm -hmm. touching anything near that, and I emailed uh, all the authors and their emails if I could find them to ask them questions about what this is and how I can learn more about mm -hmm. it because I couldn't find. Uh, public information that would teach it to me in an easy way. Sure. Even though there's some sites that have it as a high level, it, it wasn't very uh, satisfying mm -hmm. to read high level descriptions of a serious disease. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, were you happy with your um, um, hematologist in your community? Did you feel like you were getting the um, advice and treatment that you needed as a parent with a young child with this disease? Uh, that's a great question. We were very fortunate. Uh, we live in Albuquerque, mm -hmm. and uh, the University of New Mexico mm -hmm. has, uh, uh, I guess, a nationally recognized pediatric program. And so Dr. Winter... Uh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, was our first pediatric hematologist. And he immediately took on the situation, admitted what he did, did not know. Um, and so we were, to answer your question, I guess, short uh, sentences would be, uh, we were very happy because he, he put us at ease, um, uh, you could, and he reached out to the community, even some of the folks that I had reached out to mm -hmm. already, so I knew mm -hmm. that he was reaching out, and he started attending uh, some of these conferences to learn more about it. Good. And so he seemed to quickly get on top of the situation for my daughter. That so, is fantastic. And so we were very fortunate, by the way. Uh, I don't. I don't know if that's the norm. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. However, you know, I mean, you're making a very good point in one that was made in the session today, and that is, you know, there has to be a sense of humility with the physician yes. who will be open to learning more and open to attending a conference and really um, communicating with other physicians that might be able to help them navigate through through um, treatment options and so on. Yes. So I'm so glad to hear you're happy with your hematologist. That's a plus. Yes. So where? How is your daughter doing? Uh, she's doing, I would say, very well. Uh, she she didn't really show a lot of symptoms of the disease. So when we first took her in, it was related to her having issues with her stomach, like being uh, nauseated when mm -hmm. she did extra strenuous exercise. Mm -hmm. I believe, in hindsight, after talking to some specialists like Dr. Mesa, he, he, uh, he stated that that can actually occur with mm -hmm. folks with ET. Mm -hmm. And so they did some blood work related to that, and that's when they found it. But um, in general, uh, she's healthy, but even before that, she's had cases of headaches and migraines, which we never related to this. Sure. But we were managing that pain at that, you know, at that point okay. with with uh, yoga and meditation and all. You know, they have a great program at UNM where they try to teach various ways to mm -hmm. deal with manage mm -hmm. with the stress and pain associated with her headaches and things. And so, because of that, 
I think she's doing very well. I, I mean, no. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, what medication, if any, is she taking? Uh, sh she was started off on a hydroxyurea, and it was uh, about a thousand milligrams, which is I can't remember what that is per kilogram kind of thing for her, uh, and that ended up reducing her platelet count a lot. And then uh, interferon was added to it um, with the hopes of reducing the hydroxyurea, which I think just this week. Her okay. current hematologist said, let's take her off. Okay, um, right. And so interferon and uh, hydroxyurea to this point, and I think from here on out, it's going to be interferon only, okay. the pegulated interferon. As a parent, um, what wisdom would you impart to other parents out there that are just hearing the news that their child has an MPN, or a parent that is really at a loss and and um, is just going through the system and going through whatever they're being told to do. Um, what three things would you say to that parent and, and to those parents? Okay, that's a great question. Um, I guess the first thing I would say is uh, knowledge is empowerment. Mm -hmm. I, I think the more you can learn, um, the better you'll have a handle on the situation. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing I would say related to that though is there's a lot of, you, you have to parse through a lot of knowledge. And with this kind of disease, there's a lot of information out there not meant for your eyes because it doesn't apply to your children's situation. Mm -hmm. It's meant for older folks. And sometimes parsing that technical data, mm -hmm. I think extremely challenging. And so you gotta be careful of uh, basically all the information mm -hmm. and I guess the point being for both of those is I think you have to take on the role of being the advocate for sure. your for your kid for sure. your child it's always I'm all, I have to admit early on I was always looking for someone to take that from me mm -hmm. and rely on that person mm -hmm. so the stress levels would be reduced for me uh, but I did manage to deal with my stress and still take keep that role I think that's mm -hmm. critical and finding support mm -hmm. I think now with what you guys have set up. Uh, I think there's more uh, easily uh, findable, discoverable mm -hmm. uh, communication and support. I would take advantage of that. I would reach out to folks who've had it, the parents, attend this. This mm -hmm. was wonderful, by the Thank way. Thank you very much. Um, I, it made me feel a lot better uh, about hearing what, what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. It's a great support mechanism. Mm -hmm. So kind of in those, those three things, probably. We do a lot of outreach with hematologists, mm -hmm. and um, we have that new little booklet for pediatric um, MPN docs to give out to their um, patients mm -hmm. and, and parents. Um, but we also want to really start a, a solid, formal network, and so it's totally optional, um, and, and we hope to make that a very um, um, private, with the con consultation of hematologists that specialize with uh, pediatric MPN mm -hmm. and young adults, um, would would you rate that as something very important in oh, the grander scheme of things? Absolutely. Okay. Because though I think the work I've done personally on the last several years, where you hear that your child's the only one with the issue, and there's not a lot of literature on children having this disease. Mm -hmm. And in the data that has taken me that long to obtain, uh, now I think for folks, if they can get that information in a shorter it's period of time, yes. I think that's wonderful. Okay. Finding the support okay. community, finding connections to folks who specialize in it, uh, I, I think making that easier, accessible for everyone, I think okay. is great. I, that's a no-brainer in my opinion.